Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today we are going to talk about a very interesting approach, the crosswind approach and landing which happened to Airbus 380 a couple of days ago in Heathrow Airport of London city. So that approach and landing happened during the Dennis storm activity in the UK. So let's just see the video. And now my friends, as you can see, we have a strong crosswind component for this approach because pilots should have kept the large crop angle during this approach. So everything went well for that situation, but at some point pilots just flared early. And due to early flare, the aircraft were flown so much the runway and the crop angle increased even more and the aircraft just touched down the runway with this huge crop angle. Actually, it's not very huge as it looks, but after all, the pilots did quite well job. They put the aircraft in line with the runway central line and they finished the landing roll. So my friends, was it scary? For me, it was just interesting because I rarely see these huge machines like Airbus 380 land with the crosswind conditions and huge crop angle. Well and honestly saying guys I don't know why this video have so many views in just couple of days and went viral and some of the people just saying wow great pilot job here they made a, some kind of heroic action and some people just blame pilots for a clumsy landing I think after all pilots did well, They're, they did a safe, quite safe landing, they put the aircraft in line uh, with the runway, so I don't think they did something really wrong. And also guys, and it's very important, I'm not the Airbus pilot, okay, I'm Boeing pilot, so I don't really know what actions and how they need to deal with the strong crosswind situations landing huge Airbus 380. So my friends, I'm in lack of competence of telling you what was done right and what was done wrong, but I can tell you from aerodynamic point of view, from principles of flight view, what was really happening to that aircraft, because aerodynamic laws are applied for every airplane, whether it's Airbus 380 or small Cessna. And to give you more proper and understandable explanation, I have this blackboard with me. Actually, it's dark green. And I have this airplane, the toy airplane, the red one, and I call it Red Baron. Firstly, my friends, I would like to tell you about different techniques that we use during the crosswind approaches. There are three of them. Well, the first technique is called deck rub and it's widely used and commonly used by pilots during the crosswind approaches and landings on a dry runways. So here is our airplane, whether it's Airbus or Boeing, doesn't matter. All the aerodynamic laws are applied for all airplanes, as I say to you before. So we are going towards the runway and imagine that we have the wind uh, from this direction. If we continue approach towards the runway, if we have winds from this side and we will not do anything, our aircraft will just go like this. So we will go out of the runway center line to the right. And to prevent this deviation, pilots point the nose of the airplane towards a little bit towards the wind and continue face the runway center line and approach with the crop angle. So the crop angle is the angle between the aircraft longitudinal axis, uh, between its heading actually, and between the aircraft track. So this angle is called crop angle. And with this crop angle, the aircraft little by little approaches the runway. So to decrop the airplane, pilots should put the aircraft nose in line with the runway axis, with the runway central line. So my friends, how to do it? Just before landing, just before touchdown, during the flare maneuver, you put the right pedal, in this case you put the rudder pedal, the right rudder pedal, and you put the aircraft nose in line. But your wing here will go faster than this wing, so this wing will go forward and this wing will go downward. In this wing, because of this difference, uh, will have more lift comparable to this one. So if you put just rudder, your aircraft will go like this. Because the differential force on parts of the wing will force your aircraft also to bank. 
That is why we also need to compensate it by banking to the left. How do I usually do it? Well, I continue the approach towards the runway with some crop angle until I reach the flare height. The flare height on a Boeing 737, well, it depends on conditions, but usually it's around 30 feet. So I start my flare maneuver, maintaining this crop, and simultaneously I put the rudder pedal also just before landing. So 30, I have 30, start my flare, around 20, I reduce the thrust and simultaneously put the rudder input and also simultaneously put the ailerons, put the yoke to the left to compensate this difference in a lift force. It may look complicated, but it's very simple if you get used to it, guys. So you just approach, you flare, you put the rudder, aileron, and you put your aircraft in line with the center line. In perfect conditions, you just touch, uh, touch down the runway uh, in central line with zero bank angle. Well, my friends, according to Boeing flight crew training manual, you can also land using just a crop angle technique. So you can just maintain this crop. You don't need to do some kind of maneuvers and you can land like this, but it's recommended on wet and contaminated runways. On wet or contaminated runways, we always have some kind of layer, layer of water, layer of snow, which minimize the friction during the touchdown. On dry runways, we don't have this uh, feature, we don't have any layers, so the friction during the touchdown is very strong, which put a lot of stress on the gear itself, on the wheels, on landing gear. And because of that, if you made the landing with large crop angle, you land it like this, you have to make the inspection, the maintenance inspection of landing gear and of the aircraft itself. Finally, my friends, the last technique is called side slip. So basically put some bank angle towards the wind direction, compensating the wind with some component of your lift force. The good thing and I think the best thing about this technique is that you continue to maintain your nose pointed uh, towards the runway. So your heading is in with the same line with the required track. So you continue just fly towards the runway, but the downside of it is quite strong. The downside of it is if you land this aircraft like this, you can, there is a risk and opportunity to scratch your wing or wing mounted engines. And on modern commercial aircraft, mostly we have low wing airplanes and very low mounted engines, very near to the ground. So this technique is not recommended for jet airplanes with uh, low mounted engines, with the engines which are very close to the ground. But if you fly high wing airplane like Cessna or ATR-72 or Dash Q-400, uh, it's absolutely normal to use this technique uh, while landing. So we just land on uh, one landing gear, but you are within the same line with the central line and you make the very comfortable landing, of course. But on Boeing 737 and on Airbus A380, it's better to land with a crop or the crop technique. Let's just compare this landing to other Airbus 380 landings. So here we go with the Emirates landing somewhere, I don't know where. And this landing is a little bit different because they start the decrop maneuver. Uh, they not finish the decrop maneuver until touchdown, but they started just before the touchdown, which is also good. Uh, in this case, the crop angle was not increased before touchdown, it was decreased. And also they made a very firm landing compared to what we seen in a previous video. And here is one more video of Airbus A380 crosswind test flights. It's very old, so the video quality is not very good. But anyway, we can see that the crew starts the decrop maneuver before landing, minimizing the crop angle. 
and also they made a very firm landing. And here's one more video of another airplane, Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which is in much better quality. And also we will see the deck wrap technique just before landing. They not eliminating the full crop angle, but they're minimizing the crop angle just before touchdown. So my friends, it's just my opinion. If you're approaching the run with a huge crop angle, you need just to minimize it before your touchdown. If you want to eliminate the crop angle, there is always a risk that you will put a little bit more rudder or a little bit more bank. So it's just need to minimize it before uh, the landing and that's all after landing you just put the aircraft in line with the central line but in heat roll landing they didn't minimize the crop angle they increased it however it wasn't done in purpose and i explain you why so my friends here is our airbus 380 the runway heat roll the wind and uh, the airplane heading its actual track and the difference is called crop angle. The aircraft approach speeds on more commercial jets are mostly the same, whether it's Boeing 737, Airbus 320 or huge Airbus 380. So I took somewhere in the middle, it's 155 knots approach speed for Airbus. Um, even in gusty condition, it should be okay. Uh, according to Boeing 737 flight crew tra training manual, if we have gusty wind, even though it's a crosswind, we also have to apply the wind correction and we should keep it until the touchdown. And here we have just a crosswind, 90 degrees angle, uh, the sinus of 90 equals 1. That means that in this case, alpha equals uh, 12.7 degrees so this angle should be around 12.7 guys i just forgot to mention that i took maximum crosswind allowed for boeing 737 and it's 33 knots so with this uh, wind of 33 and uh, speed of 155 knots we have this angle 12.7 degrees of course it may look like the uh, crop angle is very huge but the airplane is huge itself if you compare the crosswind landings even with the stormy conditions in the storm conditions of some kind of small airplanes like ATRs, Cessnas or even Boeing 737s you will see that they look less I would say extreme compared to Airbus rating because this thing is huge and long itself and it may look that the bank the crop angle is very huge but it's not actually so finally my friends why the crop angle was increased at that moment I would say because they flared a little bit early so the airplane flared and then it continued to fly horizontally if you fly horizontally and you remove the engine thrust, you continue to lose the airspeed. So let's see what will happen to the crop angle itself if we lose some of the speed. So my friends, if we put 145 knots of airspeed on touchdown, so if we lose 10 knots, so it was 150, Five and we lose 10 during the flare and long flare. Uh, if we put 145 into this formula, the crop angle would increase uh, by one degree. So it will equals 13.7. So I'll put it here. Alpha equals 13.7 degree. Just one degree, but it's already been increased. I think in overall pilots did a great job. They put the aircraft in the same line with the central line after landing. Maybe they had to do some kind of inspection, inspection of landing gear after landing. But anyway, it was more or less safe as for me. It's, my, it's just my opinion, guys. I'm not telling the truth to you. I'm telling my opinion. 
Nothing extraordinary happened during that approach and landing. If there had been a threat to air safety, the flight crew would have performed the go-around. I'm 100% sure about it. And you may say to me that there's some kind of information leak from the training department, that airline, uh, telling that the pilots should have performed the go-around. But anyway, that information is not proved so far. Uh, for this moment so I'm in doubt about it and yes if you are not sure about your landing you need to do the to make a go around all right my friends thank you very much for watching this video I hope you understand at least something that was on this blackboard and I was talking to you and explaining together with Red Baron and I hope you enjoyed this video like if you like and subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram and have a great time.